Hey guys, JH, welcome to the practice tee. Okay, there's been a bit of an absence for uh, a few months because I've been moving residents and uh, that takes uh, priority. But I'm back, but as you can see I've just uh, got a makeshift practice tee. This is my new property here, we've got a nice fairway here. But I haven't established a uh, proper hitting um, tee yet, so in the interim uh, we'll use this uh, <coughs> makeshift one. Okay guys, what I want to talk about today is what I term the non-negotiables. Of all the lessons I've given over the years, I think probably the single biggest fault I've seen with the club player or the, you know, the, the medium handicap uh, to high handicap player is a total lack of commitment to a proper grip. Now I don't want to go into a long diatribe about the grip but there, there are facets of the grip that are non-negotiable and when you get them right they contribute to proper ball striking. Now, now what I've done um, in the last couple of months even though I haven't been on video I've, I've hit a few balls and I've been working on something that I, I just wanted to be able to give you guys that I think will help all of you, any player and that is the consolidation of a proper grip I mean a real grip and, and, it's, and it, it revolves around pressure points and there are three pressure points and the first pressure point is the back three fingers of the lead arm or lead hand the second pressure point is the thumb pad of the lead hand at the rear of the shaft, not on top of the shaft, at the rear of the shaft, in that position there. Not there, there, so that we can be pushing the shaft sideways. The other pressure point is the, is the trigger finger, the index finger and that first knuckle joint. It's, a, it's actually a combination of both. It's, it's the folding of the right hand over onto that thumb and in conjunction with that trigger finger, forefinger or index finger. And we want that, that index finger placed behind the shaft. The reason we want that is we want all our pressure behind the shaft, not on top of the shaft, behind it so that when we when we come down and we're retaining, and I'll talk about this other non-negotiable here, when we're retaining the right or the trail wrist angle, we can pressure the club this way, or that way. My left thumb's pressuring it down, into out, down and forward. If we have it on the top, it's very hard to pressure the shaft sideways. You really can't pressure it. And all the great all the great players, uh, you know, Hogan, Sneed, Sanders, Palmer, they always had this predominance of this, this right uh, or trail index finger. So guys, it's this, it's basically like you're pushing, you're trying to bend the shaft with that there. Now, you have to have that in the grip and that helps you consolidate the grip. Because too many players, you know, even when they have a practice swing, you watch them with a practice swing, this comes apart, or this comes apart. Guys, nothing comes apart. It has to stay there, it has to be set at address, it has to stay there, it has to be increased, coming down, and it has to be held and forced into the, the ball. Now how do we force it into the golf ball? You can't just do it with your hands. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to do that. Because that doesn't work, guys. You can't apply the hands and the arms um, deliberately. They have to be a byproduct of the pivot. The pivot being that. The pivot, the pivot there, and when Hogan was the best, Rory's unbelievable, as are all the good players. They motivate the arms and the kinetic chain coming down with the pivot get to here and then it's this, it's here. 
I call it I call it the bladder compression because in our anatomy our bladder is across here and I feel when I hit it really good that I'm actually doing that that this here is going this way as I'm coming down this way and, and that sort of that part of the anatomy there and that process there gets this these pressure points these three pressure points activating correctly pushing pushing that way pushing sideways down and into the ball now the pressure points are non-negotiable the pivot absolutely non-negotiable and it must happen early it's got to be the uh, the motivator that pulls the arms in or the ignition process that pulls the arms into play yeah because we can't just do that guys because you won't do that all the time but but if you basically set it so I, I feel that this happens I get this flailing connection type process here So, so it's this type of action. It's we're getting this angle here, we're reconnecting here, and we're hear that. And, and the reason I wanted to to hit with this mat here is that you can really hear the impact. I've got sort of a, a ply underneath it so that you can really hear the down hit on it. Like if we're not if we're not applying that pressure, it's that type of hit. But when we apply the pressure, it's that type of hit. It's quite a it's quite a, a solid hit. Now this is usually a, an indicator that you've held that that non-negotiable set angle of the backswing when we finish like this. And all the great ball strikers have done that. Hogan. Yeah. Because they fire the pivot guys, they don't fire hands and don't wrap it over. You get it here, they fire the pivot. If you fire the pivot, the position of the hands that you set at address stay there. You don't have to do that to release the club. The release of the club is that angle there and there. You'll always see this formation on a good ball striker. Steve Elkington, Hogan, Martin Ayres, my good friend Martinez, they've all got this this process. That's not a good look. That's a good look. So guys, we, to, to keep that angle is one of the non-negotiables. You, you must you must keep that angle. And the way you keep it is by isolating the desire to fire the club into the ball like that. The club's got to be pulled into the ball. It's got to be it's got to be compressed. The whole body's compressing into the ball. Here. It's like that. It's that. So really work on your grip. Work that pressure point, the back the back fingers of the lead hand, the thumb on the side of the shaft, so we can pressure it this way, this forefinger on the side of the shaft, so we can pressure it forward. When you put your right hand on, wrap it on like that, which we saw Hogan do in that demonstration. You see, he just wrapped it on, and it goes over the cup of the right, or well, the trail hand goes over the thumb of the lead hand, but you have to wrap it on. Don't, don't just put it on like that. Wrap it on so that you've got the pressure, in, in, in that forefinger. So you get this nice formation through the ball and you'll always get a nice crisp hit. Now the other thing guys for the club player and someone that hasn't got a grooved action in the backswing I think you're far better off by hinging the wrist as opposed to cocking the wrist. If you hinge it, much easier to hinge the wrist. Hinge, that's a hinge, that's a cock. Much easier to, to hinge it like that, a la Dustin Johnson.
a big power move. So we're hinging it and then we can just keep that angle there, fire the pivot and just bang the golf ball. See the hit's so, so really clean, crisp and strong. And of course the accuracy problems um, basically evaporate if you've got this function of the hands through the ball as opposed to that function, that function or that function. That there, just, just in a little, a little shot, So we're always going to hit the ball first because that angle is that angle is retained. That's how I demonstrate it when I've got a, a physical lesson with students. I want them to make that sound, which is a full collection. And I, I mean nobody swings a golf club like that, but that gives you the feeling. A and then all you do then from then on is to just incorporate that in a full swing. See this here guys? I promise you the ball can't get offline if you do that. That's why Hogan was so straight. That's why Doug Sanders was so straight. Why David Graham was so straight. Okay, so we'll just revise. Back fingers. Here. Put the get the, the lead hand thumb behind the shaft. Behind it, not on top of it, behind it. Get the index finger of the trail hand. So you can push that knuckle on the side of the shaft the same as the as the lead hand. And the pressure point, the other pressure point is the right, the, the trail hand coming over the lead hand like that. Right, we'll hit a full shot with full, full compression on this. The ball doesn't move guys, I mean it just doesn't move. That's how Tom Watson hits it. Tom Watson doesn't take divots, um, but he's just a compressor. To get the feeling more, if you want to actually get that, this sound, all that is guys, is you've got to fire the pivot harder and not let this angle get away. Fire the pivot harder and don't let that angle get away. fire it much harder. We'll really just concentrate on the pivot and holding that angle. You can't make better contact than that, that's just perfect. And see that's a very that's a long way that ball. It's surprising, see how little action I've got going on? Not a lot of big shoulder turns, not much happening at all, but I'm still getting normal distance. And it's very hard to control this action here from this length golf swing. Now I'm not a flexible dude, so I don't take it, I mean I can take it back a fair way, but I don't feel like I've got any control when I do that. So I just like to have as much connection as I can get. The other byproduct of all of this guys is as we come down with that angle there, first movement down is a re-establishment of the right arm to the body as a connection. We've got, we've already got the left arm connected and the right arm is, is re-established here. And then the pivot just fires all that. Pivot just fires all of that through the ball. <laughs> Did you see that? very straight guys, that just, that just hit the flag and 
way down there and the other ball before just actually bounced. We thought two of them in a row hit. Uh, the first one just missed it. Okay. It's very straight. Okay, now we'll really compress this one. I'm going to hold this angle. Now that's great guys because my hands feel like they're doing nothing. I mean really nothing. To learn it, just get a sand on or something. Got a flag here at 50. Much easier to, to hold the angles when the when the swing's short. Fifty-one, and you can get very aggressive with that. That, but that is because of this. That bladder compression. Boy, that had some on it. This is the new. I've got the new ping eye clubs, and I've just spent all day yesterday setting them up and uh, for my lie and I don't set them up to degrees I just have the loft and lie machine there and I just bend it put the club down put it till it feels right till the front and that's right I don't even know what the specs are but my specs are about two two and a half to three flat all right well really this is the drill nice connection here just gonna hinge that up that guy. We'll do a little bit more on it during the week but that's the basic um, foundation of what we're going to talk about this week and I'll show you how to to actually formalize the introduction of that into the um, into the to the swing. There's a few more little snippets that are um, that are you know, absolute requirements. But guys, we'll, we'll have you working with a very, very correct grip. The right type of grip gives you the right um, capability to apply the shaft in a, uh, Jackie Burke used to call it springing the shaft. And he said, Hogan used to mention that. Hogan said he wanted to spring the shaft. Now I've never been a springer because I've just, I've just been a free agent. I usually just let the golf club go. But you know, I think to tell you if people want to hit the ball really consistently, and the guys that the guys that have a lot of trouble being consistent, this will help you dramatically. Okay, we'll just hit this really solid. See, that's gone all awful, awful long way for it. The sand on. I mean, that's gone like you know. Oh like a really hard wedge distance. Now just, just until I get back to you during the week, just get just get your wedge of sand on, just set it up, get those pressure points, feel those pressure points here when you take the club away, and just work on a little pivot. So that club didn't even go back past there. Just work on this. firing this guys bang and this this is that kinetic chain just following along just following along okay we'll do more during the week but there's some really good stuff in this and the reality is guy they are non-negotiable you have to do them if you want to be a consistent ball striker this here is the heart and soul of the golf swing these angles here those pressure points and instigating the the downswing with the pivot as opposed to the arms or the shoulders or anything else. It has to be this action. And we'll talk about you know the formality of that and how you implement that and instigate that into your golf swing later on the week. But I'm just back on deck now guys and um, I'll keep thinking my own guys, uh, my own students, um, 
uh, I'll have some specific stuff for you guys. Um, but we're just going to catalogue a lot of this just as for the library, as all these videos are. They're just for the library. They're not, uh, they're not teaching videos. They're just, just library um, uh, inserts. Okay, guys, we'll, uh, we'll do some more during the week. And this is my, my new home. And we've got a beautiful fairway here. And once I set up the tee here, it uh, goes down to the river. I use a lot of old golf balls because only about 200 metres to the river there but you know the old golf balls with the long clubs I just hit them into the water but I've got thousands of those so it doesn't matter it's beautiful guys and I don't get interrupted like I do at a commercial range it's very difficult when you go to a commercial range you want to do something specific something on there okay this is not the salubrious surroundings that you have at a you know at a country club or something like that but the good thing is we don't get disturbed and we can make sure that we've got um, you know the thought process uh, at hand and we can apply it in the videos. Okay guys, well, uh, well, and I don't even know what my, I mean there's a lot of shade here and I don't, I've got to get the camera right uh, in the distances and I haven't got that yet. So guys, we'll do some more uh, during the week, but I'm back. Talk to you later.